Home sweet home, there's no place like home. We have many phrases to express the joys of a home, but what was an ancient Italian house like? The best evidence for ancient Italian housing comes from the cities of Ostia and Pompeii. Most of the evidence from Ostia is from the 2nd century CE and later. The homes in Ostia are apartment buildings, the kinds of homes where the majority of ancient Italian society would have lived. Many of these buildings had shops on the ground floor, and the second floor had the living quarters for the family who operated the shop. Other apartment buildings had fancy apartments on the ground floor, and progressively less fancy apartments on each floor above it. Very few apartments have any sign of a kitchen or bathroom. The apartments then were places for sleeping and storing property. The family needed to eat out or go to bars for food and drink. Public latrines and the large-scale bath complexes would have served other needs, including social needs. A bit earlier, in Pompeii, which was covered by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 CE, there are two basic types of homes, apartments and upper-class houses. A typical Pompeian example of both apartments and upper-class houses can be seen in the building known as the House of the Tragic Poet. This building has an upper-class house in the back and two shops in the front. In both shops, you can see a set of stairs that rises to the upper floor where the shopkeeper and his family probably lived. These small residences would have limited room and a fire would have been dangerous. Therefore, most of the cooking was either done over coals in a brazier, or the family obtained food from one of the many thermopolia, or fast food joints around town. The other type of home in Pompeii is the upper class house, and these houses had a typical plan. The entrance to the house, called the Fauques, was a corridor between the two shops. In many houses, the Fauques contained some apotropaic device, meaning an image meant to scare away evil spirits. In the house of the tragic poet, the floor of the Fauques was paved with the mosaic of a guard dog. Below the dog, the mosaic helpfully reads, Kawe Kanem, or Beware of the Dog. After continuing down the Fauques, the visitor to the house of the tragic poet would come to the atrium. The atrium was a welcoming area for guests. In the center of the atrium is the impluvium, Rainwater fell through the roof into the impluvium, which was a small pond connected to a cistern. The Pompeians were then able to store rainwater for later use for drinking or cleaning. Behind the atrium was the tablinum, which is the office of the head of the household. Here he would meet clients or the men whom he supported with gifts and legal counsel. The tablinum of the house of the tragic poet was nicely decorated with frescoes and a black and white mosaic. The main scene of many frescoes from this house and other houses in Pompeii have been removed and are now on display in the Naples Archaeological Museum. The fresco from the Tablinum in the House of the Tragic Poet shows the scene from the Greek tragedy Alcestis, wherein Metis is told that he must die unless someone dies in his place. Alcestis, his wife, who hears this prediction, will volunteer to take his place. Behind the tablinum was a small garden with a shrine. This garden, called a peristyle, may have contained a fruit tree to supply the family with a little bit of food. The garden was also a way of incorporating the countryside into the city. The shrine in the peristyle was to the household gods who watched over the Pompeian family. When the children came of age, they would dedicate special objects at the shrine to symbolize beginning the next stage in their lives. The boys would dedicate their bolai, or good luck necklaces, and the girls would dedicate their dolls. All of these rooms, the fauques, the atrium, the tablinum, and the peristyle, were on an axis so that they would all be visible from the street. A passerby was supposed to be able to see the head of the household at work, the house's nice decorations, and the rustic beauty the owner could import into the city. This sight line made these rooms have a very public feeling. The wealthy Pompeians were always on view in these parts of the house. They could, though, have a more private life out of public view. 
Around the atrium were several multi-purpose rooms. Based on archaeological finds in several Pompeian houses, Pompeians probably slept, put on makeup, and conducted other more private and personal activities in these rooms. In the back of the house, around the peristyle, were more multi-purpose rooms. The large room in the back of the house was the triquenium, or dining room. This room is where both men and women reclined on couches to eat at dinner parties. The name for this room comes from the three couches. Quine is the Greek word for couch. Next to the triquenium was conveniently located the kitchen and the latrine. The two areas were located next to each other because waste would have been removed from both. Today, this proximity of the kitchen and latrine would be frowned upon for sanitary reasons. The Pompeian upper class houses then had some very public areas and some more private areas. The private areas were grouped around the atrium and peristyle, which also served as light wells to illuminate the house. Few houses in ancient Italy had any windows opening onto the street because it was a security risk. Windows was not always practical or affordable, and the few windows that did exist were placed high above the street and had bars on them. Without light in many of these multi-purpose rooms, many household activities, such as weaving wool, were simply performed in the atrium, making the wealthy Pompeians' lives very public. This low level of privacy is rivaled by the insight we give other people into our own lives through Facebook, Twitter, and other social media platforms.